Hey, welcome to the Oz Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn. Today's fun project, uh, we're going to talk about PCV valves here today, specifically on a Hyundai. Now, the Hyundai Kia is basically, that's the same manufacturer. And I've got quite a few comments and questions here on YouTube as to where is the PCV valve, because it's very hard to locate or see. Let me show you what it looks like. Basically, this one is metal and it's threaded here on one end, screws in, and then the hose attaches right here. Now, this regulates how much vacuum can pull through the crankcase. So basically, inside the crankcase, there's fumes are built up from combustion, and you wanna expel those fumes because it can contaminate the oil. Um, if there's too much pressure, when this opens, it releases pressure, that vacuum, uh, then the oil seals and stuff won't have that pressure behind it pushing it out which can blow out an oil seal or just cause oil to leak past it and then of course it also regulates some of the pollution so instead of those crankcase fumes being released to the atmosphere it's sucked in through the crankcase uh, or in through the intake and reburned or burned and that eliminates some of the emissions that way so basically that's what this does now you might hear it rattling that's normal you want it to rattle. Now, as far as replacing these, some people never replace them. Other people like myself here, I'm about to do a spark plug uh, tune up here, replace the plugs. The car has 118,000 miles. You're supposed to change it around 105, those plugs. But my point is I got to remove the air box, remove the, uh, the air filter and the uh, throttle body I had to think about it for a second get the throttle body out of the way and that way I can show you guys where this is located because people have been asking me they just don't know where it's at let's disconnect the battery first you always remove your ground first and then now uh, that's a 10 millimeter right there get that terminal out of the way there we go this one has a shim on it might be a little tricky now nah, it's coming right up I think it is Oh boy, let me get a screwdriver. Let me get a little pry bar actually. The real deal here on the Oz Stars Cars channel. So there we go. Let's give it a little something something. That shim came up with it. Okay, so that's disconnected. Um, let's take this little doohickey off right here. What I like to do to remove these plastic screws, I just take a small screwdriver real small and then get the little plastic screw loose and then you can pull these little tabs right out these uh little clips i guess you call them pins or pins is what they are this tool i have here is really handy for moving the removing these uh plastic pins you just get it under there and you kind of you squeeze it you see how that moves so it pushes this out these are really nice they're real thin and get in there tight all right, so that's out of the way. Let's pull this straight out. Uh, I want to get the battery out. Okay, there's one clamp down there you guys can't see that holds this battery in. It's a uh, 12 millimeter. We'll just get that up out of the way. Right here, I'll show it to you. So that's that. That just clamps down the battery down at the bottom. And we should be ready to uh, pull this sucker out now so you can slide it forward. This one has a, uh, an insulator around it. Let's get that out of our way so we can grip, grip this a little better. So you get your insulator out, just slips over top, keeps the heat off of it. And now we can yank this sucker out. All right, there we go. Let's get this air filter housing out of the way so we want to Disconnect this sensor right here. Just push down on that clip, pull out. Now this has uh, got a harness right here on the side. So let's go ahead and take our fancy little uh, clip removal tool there. See if we can't get this to come off without breaking. There it goes. Okay, popped it out. She fought me the whole way. So if you can't remember where this goes, go ahead and label it. So you know, you don't forget to Hook that back up because that will definitely throw a check engine light for you. All right, let's disconnect this hose right here. Hopefully this will come off fairly easy. Pull on that. Oh, come on, baby. There it goes. 
So with that hose out of the way now, hopefully you guys can see this. There's a uh, clamp for the intake for the uh, throttle body uh, tube here from the air filter box. We need to loosen that clamp so that we can get that out of our way. And sometimes if they've been there a long time, they're a little... The uh, boot itself kind of, or not the boot, but the hose, the intake tube can kind of get stuck on there. So we'll see. Hopefully it won't fight us too much. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, we got two 10 millimeters down here we need to take out. So let's get that right now, get a swivel on that 10 millimeter, just so I can get in there a little better, easier. That would help. That one and this one. There we go. Pull that. Okay, come on. It's a good idea to take pictures of this stuff if you're not familiar with it. So, okay. Woo! Had to give it a good yank. She didn't want to come out. Okay, there we go. So, this whole thing is out now. Easy enough, that gives us plenty of room. So right behind the throttle body here is your PCV, and we'll take these bolts out and just pull this whole assembly as one out of the way. Um, that way we can have full access to the valve itself, and then I'll show you where that's at. And while this throttle body's out, I'm gonna clean it. Makes sense. There's number four. There we go. Okay, let's unplug this connector here. Get that out of the way. Okay, we'll just flop that over. This has a pretty good amount of carbon in it, so I'm going to clean that. There it is. So with the throttle body now out of the way with those four bolts removed, I'm gonna point to the PVC with my screwdriver because in person it's further back than it looks on camera. That's it right here. So it has this foam cover over top of that metal, I guess for insulation purposes. And there's a clamp here with a rubber hose that comes up and it connects right in here to the top of the intake. All right, my camera shut off. I don't know what got recorded or not, or maybe I didn't hit record, I just noticed it. Anyway, got the top hose off right here, so of the, for the PCV right here. Hopefully you can see that where my finger's at. It's right here, just popped that off with this, got that clamp free. Now I'm getting the bottom clamp out or off the hose and I got a pair of hose pliers here. These things are nice, they grab around and then you can twist, twist that sucker. There we go, so it's free. And now I can pull it right out, okay? So here's, here's what we're doing down there, you can see it. So let me zoom out a little bit. So you got your clamp right here, which is a little hard to see right now. Let me grab my pliers. But right here, just a regular hose clamp. Okay, on this end, and then you got one right up here. So it goes in like this. So now you can see that stinker right there. There it is. So we'll pull this foam piece off. And let me see if I can reach in with my left hand. Just pull that, slide that cover off. So that's this, it's an insulator. And we'll reuse that. All right, so you can see there's the PCV valve right back there. That little doohickey sticking out. And what we'll do now is I'll get a 14 millimeter deep, which I already have here with a swivel and a 3H drive, and we'll get on that sucker and extract it. Let me see if I got you guys kind of focused here. You can kind of see that somewhat. Of course, my hands will probably be in the way. It's easy enough now to get on. Uh, let's see how tight it's going to be. 
Come on, here we go. And out she comes. Should be able to get it back in now. Alright. Let's see what it looks like after 118,000 miles. And we'll compare it. Oops, where are you? We'll compare it. Hmm, smells good. So it's still got the rattle. That's good. Here's our new one. Let me grab that. So here's the old one. Good wide. And there's a little bit of uh, grunge on the end. So if this thing clogs, I don't know if you can see it, that wouldn't be good. Now this car's been serviced regularly, has regular oil changes every 4,000 miles, so it's not too bad. Anyway, what I'll do now is put a little bit of thread sealer on here, a little bit of pipe dope, so to speak, and uh, we'll get this screwed back in. This valve is normally closed at idle, okay, or mostly closed, I should say, and then when the vacuum, when you accelerate, you lose vacuum, basically, vacuum pressure drops. This thing opens and allows those fumes to get sucked out of the crankcase. Basically, that's how it works, and it's that simple. All right, so here's my thread sealant. I use this stuff called Real, Real Tough, T-U-F-F. I'll link it below. Just want to put a little bit of this on here. You don't need to go crazy. Just uh, this prevent any any vacuum leak or uh, oil coming out or anything like that. There's our new valve in place, and we'll slide the insulator over it. Oop, you can't see what I'm doing. Just push that on. And now we'll get our hose hooked back up. I'm not going to show you guys how to put everything back. It's opposite of removal. But what I do suggest is you replace the throttle body gasket while you have it out. You can reuse it, but it's a good idea to replace it, especially if it's older. We got the old valve out. Now, if you didn't have another one or access to it and it was pretty nasty, you could probably spray some carb cleaner down in there, some compressed air, and, and work this thing free. Just make sure it's jiggling. That's a good sign here. So anyway, I hope the video was helpful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, if I didn't mention, I'm going to change these spark plugs out now. So I've got to take out that purge tank, they call it, Hyundai calls it that. It's the uh, intake, so the top part. There's two pieces. I need to get to those plugs. So this is going to be out for a minute. I don't have time to put it back at the moment, but you guys can do uh, just play the video in reverse. Can you do that on YouTube? I'm not sure, but if you can... There you go. You're all set. That's how you put it back together. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope it helped you out. hope it gave you some information you may have needed. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and smash the like button if you can. That helps my channel. And thanks for your time. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.